This week is messy. Brian and the kids are in Taekwondo. They've been in Taekwondo for about three years. And this Friday is their black belt test. They've been going to the school anytime they can. They've been practicing their forms. They've been sewing patches on their uniforms and completing the rest of their black belt book that they have to present of just what it's been on their journey. The, the essays, the about me, the pictures, all those types of things. On top of that, my mom came to spend a few hours here with Naomi sewing and teaching her to sew a skirt. The garden has been producing way more than I can possibly use or even stay on top of to go out and harvest fast enough. And it's apple season. So we have acquired a mass amount of apples, which we've already processed and put in the freezer quite a lot, but I still have several bags worth of apples that I need to deal with very quickly. And the laundry. Everybody decided they needed to have their clothes washed, but they didn't stick around to fold it. When I decided I wanted to be a minimalist, I did want a picture perfect, pristine home that, you know, like everybody imagines in the magazines, all the, all the pretty things. But my reality has never matched up with my expectations. The thing is, I don't live alone. <laughs> I share this home with three children and one husband. And everybody has interests. We do things. We live. There's reading. There's crafts. There's Taekwondo. There's, there's laundry. There's lots and lots of cooking. In our imagination, when we decide we're going to be minimalists or we're going to embrace minimalism, we're going to simplify our space and declutter all the excess. The reality is life is messy. There's spills, there's stains, there's dust bunnies, there's bad smells that emit from various places throughout the house. And even when we strive to have everything in its place, Life happens and sometimes all our stuff gets strewn out all over the house. And while we may strive to have things in their place and under control and have the house smelling good and looking, <laughs> looking good, there are always things that we can't control. Life happens. It's, it's messy. Expectations of a pristine home often include the bed being perfectly made, the pillows fluffed, the corners folded under. And the reality is there's some mornings that we get up and we don't have the energy to make the bed and we just kind of throw the blankets over and call it good. But here's the thing. The reality of not having a spotless home doesn't mean we're failing. Life is messy, but if it weren't so messy, it also wouldn't be so enjoyable. I love gardening, but when I'm gardening, like during the spring, during the fall, when I'm, when it takes more time and energy, there are times during that period where the inside of my home is neglected to some degree. Yes, I've learned to stay on top of the dishes and I've been able to keep my kitchen to where it's, it's easy to use. It's always at the ready for me, but I've come to ac accept that the kitchen is good enough. Like having the kitchen, you know, just ready for me at any moment is, is enough. And the rest of the house like things can go by the wayside and I can focus on the garden for that period of time. The benefit to minimalism is that when it comes to the time where I am going to write the home, it doesn't actually take that long. And in the end, it's okay. Our home is filled with memories, with love, with laughter. And in five years, I'm not going to remember how messy the house was during the time when everybody was taking their black belt test. But we will all remember the pride of accomplishment that was felt and the work that they put in to get to this point. Because minimalism isn't about having a perfect Pinterest worthy home. 
Minimalism is about the freedom, the freedom that we have to do projects, to jump into a sewing project in the middle of the week, to focus on Taekwondo enough that they could get their black belts, to process a bunch of apples and put it in the freezer so we can enjoy it all winter. And when I look around the room today, this is it. This is the extent of the mess. This is as bad as my home gets, which is huge. I can't tell you how much stuff I had before. I can't even describe the mess that it was. Like it's all this, but this would have been on top of everything else. You know, before, before minimalism, it would take me several days to have the home company ready. And during those days, during those like three days of getting ready, it would be taking stuff and like trying to hide it away, shoving it in cupboards and cabinets and behind doors so that nobody saw it. And it would creep back out. Like it wouldn't take that long to creep back out. So the difference here is that this is the extent of the mess and it's going to take us I don't know, not actually that long. The kids will be home here in about an hour and we'll tackle it, we'll get it all straightened up and we could probably do it in an hour and I don't have to try to make room for those things. All these things have a place to belong. Well, the apples aren't gonna take an hour, that's gonna take a little more time, but, but you know, the apples will go in the freezer, the zucchini will be made into zucchini bread and whatever else I can come up with. The sewing machines will go downstairs on the shelf. The clothes will be folded and put in dresser drawers. And then the house will be fine. It will be company ready. It will be enjoyable to be in. It will be completely usable for us. So let's embrace the reality of a lived in home where messes may happen, are very likely to happen, would be weird if they didn't happen. But the joy that the messes bring far outweighs that idealism, that desire for a perfect home. And if you're curious, yes, I did put dreadlocks in my hair. This is the beginning of my journey and I recorded it. So if you want to watch that video I published last week, you can check that out right here.